Hello and welcome to the first of the Hampton School Programmable Components tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to look at what programmable components are and we're going to introduce you to the microcontroller that we're going to be using for all of the other tutorials in this course. Hopefully you'll be making use of one of these two boards. Either the official Arduino Uno board which you can see on the left or the Hampton School basic board which you can see on the right. Your basic board may not look exactly like this one depending on whether you've ordered one of the official boards from China or whether you've manufactured your own but that shouldn't make a lot of difference. You'll also notice that my Arduino Uno board looks a little bit different and that's just because I've placed a bit of insulating tape over the top of the USB connector. This just prevents it from accidentally connecting to any of the shields we might put on top of it. So what are programmable components? Well, as the name suggests, at their most basic, programmable components are components that can be programmed to perform a wide variety of tasks. On these boards, the programmable component is an Atmega microcontroller. That's the black chip that you can see on both boards. This microcontroller contains all of the same elements as your PC. Let's stop and think about that for a moment. Your PC contains several crucial elements in order for it to be able to work. Now I'm not talking about the inputs and outputs like the screen or the keyboard and mouse, but I'm talking about the heart of the PC itself. There are four essential components that make up a personal computer system. These are the processor, this is the brains of the computer where all of the instructions are carried out. The main memory or RAM, this is where instructions and data are stored prior to being executed on the processor. Secondary storage, on a PC this is normally a magnetic hard drive or a solid state drive. This is permanent storage which retains its contents once the computer has been switched off. It would be no good if every time we turned off our computer it deleted all of the files and programs that we had installed. And finally inputs and outputs. On a PC there are some interfaces like USB that allow us to connect these and on these Arduino boards the inputs and outputs are connected to these headers at the side of the board. So the microcontroller contains all of those same elements that your PC has. On board that one chip is a processor, some memory, some secondary storage, it actually works more like an SSD than a magnetic hard drive and some inputs and outputs. What we're going to focus on now is how we're going to program these microcontrollers to control some real world inputs and outputs. To do that we're going to make use of another piece of hardware and that is the tutorial shield. This shield contains a number of input and output components that we can experiment with as we learn how to use the Arduino. It simply attaches to the Arduino Uno, like so, and now we can program the Arduino to control some of these inputs and outputs. Before we move on and do that, let's have a look at some of the things that are on this tutorial shield. The first and most obvious thing that we can see here is we can see eight LEDs. They're numbered one to eight and they're our most simple form of output device. We also have an RGB LED at the top here. That's essentially a red LED, a green LED and a blue LED all in one single package. The final output on this board is a piezo. That has the ability to make sounds and to play tunes and we'll look at that much later on. There are also some inputs on the board. From the most basic inputs, these two push buttons, through to a light sensor, a digital temperature sensor and a potentiometer. That's this blue one here which can be twisted to give a variety of different readings. Finally, down at the bottom here, we have a little expansion port. This allows you to connect some other types of device to this tutorial shield, such as servo motors. 
Now that we've understood what's on this tutorial shield, let's go ahead and learn how to program it by looking at the Arduino programming environment and writing our first program.